Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Holy Father, on this most joyous Pentecost Sunday, when we celebrate the gift and the birth of your church, would you remind us of our call to be members of that body who use the gifts that you've given us for your glory, for the expansion of your kingdom of peace and grace and power. Lord, break us and spill us out that we might be used for you. For you are our only rock and our only redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So as of this past Thursday, Mimi is 36 weeks pregnant, which is truly exciting and truly terrifying for me. <laughs> she's definitely reached that point where she says, you know, I don't care how much this hurts. I don't care how little sleep we're going to get over the next few months. I want this child out of me. <laughs> All you mothers here know that feeling. Now, most of you know that Mimi and I do not know the gender of the child that God has blessed us with. We figured there are very few surprises left in this world, so we were going to enjoy this most joyous surprise. <laughs> but just because I don't know the gender of our child has not stopped me from dreaming about being a daddy. On the one hand, I dream in pink. There's ballet recitals <laughs> and little tutus and little daughters running to give their daddy a hug with dolls in their hands. And there is that stupid Frozen song sung <laughs> over and over and over again. On the other hand, I dream in blue. I've got Legos and Star Wars characters and Little League games and camping trips. And I've got a little boy who gives his daddy a high five. And he sings that Frozen song over and over and over. But of course, if we wind up having a daughter that loves Legos and a son that loves to dance, we'll celebrate those things too. But I was struck by something this week as I studied what Paul says in this reading from 1 Corinthians. In all of my dreaming, I was neglecting to dream about the most important thing of all. Why was I not dreaming about the gifts that God might give our son and daughter so that they might be useful in his church? Dreaming about how those gifts are going to unfold as our son or our daughter grows in the knowledge and love of God and begins to serve him as the creation that they were meant to be. And how can I encourage as a father the expression of those gifts? so that I'm dedicated with all of my being to being the dad that my Father in heaven has called me to be. Paul tells us in that reading from 1 Corinthians that God has given each one of us, me, you, all of our children, specific gifts for the sake of the growth and the health of his body on earth, which is the church. Each of us are allowed and available to serve in our own particular way the God who serves us and fills us with his power and his grace. Paul reminds us today specifically that each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Have you all thought about that for little Bobby or thought about that for Hayden? What is the gift that's going to manifest itself? in the lives of these two precious boys. And Paul makes it really clear that none of those gifts are any more important than another. The one who preaches is no more important than the one who mops the floor. Each and every one of us has gifts that are vital for the sake of the church. And they're to be used for one purpose, and that's to build up that body, son by son, daughter by daughter, so that we might be what God has called us to be, the very presence of Christ Jesus in the world, everywhere that we go. Now, I'm trying to start dreaming not in pink or in blue, but in white, that color of baptism. And I cannot wait to see how God is going to use our son or our daughter for his purposes. I could also dream in red, 
uh, which is uh, my wife's favorite color. You know, it's weird as a priest. She goes, you look really good in blue, honey, and things like that. But she really loves me in red. So I always get excited about Pentecost because it's the sign of that fire that God pours out, that manifestation of His Spirit that is the fire of baptism. This is a perfect day to celebrate the gifts that God gives us. This is one of our principal feast days, and I am so happy to see so many of you here to celebrate this day. And you know that we have many of our children in our midst this morning because we wanted them to experience the birthday of the church. After the service, we'll go out into the courtyard and we're going to release red balloons in celebration of the birthday of the church. We're going to eat birthday cupcakes in celebration because Pentecost is the moment that God gives birth to his church. Today we celebrate that glorious reading on Acts that Lauren read for us from the lectern. And then you heard all of those voices in French and in Portuguese, is that right? Spanish, um, and in um, Chinese back here. And it was just, um, and what was this over here? Latin, yeah, you can tell how far I am from my Latin classes. Um, all of those languages bursting forth, telling the mighty acts of power that God has done in the world as he emboldens us to proclaim his word, as he empowers us for ministry as he sets his church out on the most exciting adventure that we could have ever imagined. My friends, Pentecost is a day worth celebrating. Because of Pentecost, God's Spirit dwells not just in the temple in Jerusalem, not just in the earthly body of Jesus, but now God inhabits every single one of us who say we want to be a part of his presence on earth. Because of Pentecost, the Spirit fills us up to the brim, giving us life and joy and purpose so that those gifts that Paul describes in our reading from Corinthians can begin to manifest themselves and might be signs of God's presence everywhere that we are. For us here today in the 21st century, 2,000 years after the day of Pentecost, that same Spirit wants to fill us up so that we might fill every nook and cranny of the Montgomery area with His presence and His joy and His life. And it is through baptism that we celebrate the giving of those gifts into each one of our lives. We get to see at that font this morning that moment where God descends upon each one of us and says, through the waters of baptism, I want to cleanse you and I want to prepare you for that indwelling of my Holy Spirit. So in just a few minutes, we're all going to gather around that font and little Bobby Jones and little Hayden Tinch are going to be baptized into the family of spirit-filled, kingdom-minded people. Now, I want to be clear about one thing about baptism. As Anglicans, we do not believe that baptism is salvific, which is a fancy way of saying that we don't believe that if you come to this font, you're saved forever. And, and nor do we believe that if you never make it to this font, there's no way that you can ever be saved. Rather, what we believe about baptism is this. God has marked it and set it aside as a particularly rich experience of His grace. It's a unique taste of God's goodness in our lives, and we don't want anyone to miss out on the gift of baptism. That's a goodness that blesses us, friends, regardless of our age, because God is the one who acts at that font. He is the primary actor in the baptismal waters, and not us. At that font this morning, God is making a covenant with these two little boys. As we baptize them into the family of God, I want you to hear what God says to Bobby and to Hayden. He says that if you want to be in my family, if you want to be my son in the world, then no matter what happens in this life, my answer to you 
will always be yes. If you want my life-giving spirit to be in your life and transform you, then my answer, says God, is yes. And then it will be up to Bobby and to Hayden to decide what their response is going to be to that grace that God blesses them with at that font. Baptism doesn't save us, but it does set us on the road towards growing up to the moment where we can take the promises that we make at that font on for ourselves. And God's Spirit, again, is the mover at that font. God's Spirit is the one that empowers these two little boys to one day say yes back to God. We want to live as people in His kingdom. Now, for Bobby and Hayden and for little baby Raoul later on this year on November 1st at All Saints Sunday, we baptize them even though they cannot say yes back to God on their own. They can't speak for themselves. So we have parents at that font. We have godparents at that font. We have a whole church that gathers around and says yes on behalf of these two precious boys. Lasley and Kyle and Catelyn and Aaron are going to take vows this morning at this font. They're Godparents and sponsors are going to take vows at this font. And I want you to remember that these vows are as solemn and as sacred as any marriage vows. You promise before God that that yes that you give on behalf of your baby will be reflected in the fact that you will raise this child in the knowledge and the love of the Lord. And when this whole church says that big resounding, we will, in the course of this baptismal liturgy, that's our vow, that we will stand beside this family, that we will be with these two precious families, doing all in our power to help them be the parents that God's called them to be. And one of the great things about baptism is that after all of those things are said at that font, all of us have renewed our baptismal vow. Every one of us know that we haven't really lived into our vows as firmly and as boldly as we would have liked to have since the last time we renewed those vows. So this is our chance to say yes to God again. God's yes to us is unchanging. Amen? Amen. But our yes to God can be quite fickle. And so today, as at every baptism, we ask God to yet again allow His grace to totally transform our hearts so that we might give the very best of our lives for His sake. Giving the very best of ourselves to the God who got up on that cross and died for us so that He might cleanse us and prepare us for the indwelling of His Holy Spirit. And of course, we pray that for Bobby and Hayden's sake, we'll be those parents and godparents and church that we've been called to be so that these two little boys will grow up to be men, not of the world, not of fame, not of wealth, not of status, but men of God by the grace of God. What gifts might God be prepared to pour into the hearts of Bobby Jones and Hayden Tench? It's a good chance for you to look at your own life. What gifts has God poured into your life so that you might be useful in His church as it spreads? What gifts has He given you? And are you using them for His glory? Or are you, like we all are so often, those who hoard those gifts for ourselves? Today is a chance to say yes all over again to the God who wants to use these two little boys to use you and to use me for His purposes and not for our own. He wants to expand His kingdom of grace through you and through me. Let me close this morning by telling you about three things that are going to happen this morning that will be new to the life of Christ Church Montgomery. The first is, as we come down here to the font, we're going to invite all the children who are here to come sit down here as close as you can get to the front so you can have a front row seat to the work that God is going to do 
at that font. The second thing is, af is this. After the baptisms are done, Father Rusty is going to fill this little tiny silver bucket with water from the baptismal font. And I'm going to walk around the church, and I'm going to give you all who've renewed your baptismal vows a little reminder of the washing of the water of baptism. This is a very ancient church practice that's called aspersion. And this little wand here is called an aspergillium. There will be no spelling test after the service, so don't worry about that. This is the first thing I have ever purchased off of Etsy, uh, which is actually a lie, right? I asked Father Rutzi to buy it off of Etsy, and so it's the first thing he's ever purchased off of Etsy. And he complains that he's getting lots of emails now from various weird places. But um, as you feel a few drops of this water hit you today, I want you to be reminded of your baptism and of the weight of the vows that you have prayed and you've said as you were baptized and confirmed into Christ church. Now, I don't want you to think you have been spat upon, which is what my Presbyterian father-in-law thought the first time I came at him with an aspergillium. <laughs> the final thing is this. When you come to church this coming Saturday or Sunday, um, Saturday for the installation, Sunday for worship, this font will be absolutely in your way at the doors to the church. It will stand there filled with baptismal waters. And it's a reminder that we only come into God's church through the waters of baptism, through the washing that God gives us through His Holy Spirit. So as you come in, if you desire to, you can dip your finger in that baptismal water and you can make the sign of the cross over your life, which you do not have to do in order to be a good Christian, but is a reminder, a physical act, getting your body involved in the worship of our God. I heard someone ask, me, someone ask me once, why do you do this all the time? And I say, well, if you're a Seminoles fan, you'll go to the stadium and go, oh, until you're blue in the face, right? No shame whatsoever. Well, this is a reminder that I live under the cross of Christ Jesus. So as you come into that, you can see that font. It's an invitation to remember that you only come into the church through baptism. And then as you go out of the church, it's in your way again. And it's a reminder that you only go out into the world as the baptized, as those who have been washed, not for our purposes, not for our cleansing, but so that God could cleanse us so he could use us to go out into the highways and the byways of this world and proclaim the gospel and bring many who do not know him into this place where they might know him, might be transformed by his renewing spirit. His is the spirit that created the church on Pentecost. And he keeps coming into our lives, doesn't he, by his grace, to renew us, to transform us, to redeem us. So now let us come to this font of new life and experience there the grace of our God. Amen.